This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, and welcome to Life Rewired. I'm Rob, your host. Ashley's off today visiting her parents, and she will be back next week. We have a special guest today who is from British Columbia, I believe you said. Yeah. Right? Okay, awesome. Yes. I apologize if you hear sirens or thunder or whatever. We're having bad storms here, so just bear with us. We'll get through this, okay? (laughs) So today, Michael, um, if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself and then what happened with, I understand you were in an automobile accident. Yes. Prior to May 18th, Rob, 2006, I was living on cloud nine. I was happily married father of twin children who were just six months old, and I was working in a corporate career with Molson Coors Canada. I was the director of marketing back then, and then I was traveling from Vancouver to Kelowna to attend a work function for Molson, and my family and I were involved in a single vehicle rollover on the highway. They assumed that I swore to avoid an animal. And the van I was driving rolled and rolled and rolled and came to a stop. But there were no witnesses at the scene of the accident. No one knows for sure what happened. So they just assumed that I swerved to avoid oncoming animal, etc. Goodness. So what happened when uh, I assume your, uh, I know you said your children were fine after that accident, right? Did, Did your wife sustain any injuries? My former wife fractured her wrist, and she's healed completely to this day. My son, who was six months old, was induced into a 10-day coma. His twin sister, who was also six months old, suffered a bloody nose. And Rob, I myself, fell asleep for six months into a deep, deep coma for six months. Goodness, that had to be so... Um, confusing when you wake up from a coma after that amount of time. What was that like when you woke up? Did you have any uh, knowledge that you'd been out for so long, or was it just like you just went to sleep and woke right back up? Well, Rob, I'll tell you this. As you know, the brain does not remember. It wants to protect the individual, so I don't remember the scene of the accident at all. The only time I really remember is when I was waking up when I was going into the hyperbaric oxygen chamber for treatment. And basically, I remember my life from that point to this point in the last 18 years. My memory is intact with my life before my injury, my years mm-hmm. growing up in Quebec City playing sports, high school, etc. But what I don't remember, of course, was the accident or the day before that at all. But I remember my children being born, which you were born six months before my accident. I remember my wedding in Mexico in the year 2000. But of course, I don't remember nothing prior to the accident or the accident itself. Nor do I remember around my time in the hospital at all when I was waking up from my coma, etc. Goodness. Now, I know you said the doctors were telling you that you'd never walk again. You'd never be able to feed yourself. I mean, doesn't it feel great to prove doctors wrong? It feel, it's amazing. My mom and dad, who we relocated to Vancouver the day after my accident, were told that I would never speak, eat, or walk ever again. They said, what well, we recommend you do, Bob and Susie, is to place your son in a long-term care home for the balance of his days because he'll never be able to be independent enough nor progress enough to be able to walk and talk and do the things that you hear me mention now, et cetera. Wow, you, yeah. you were just an awesome person, Michael. Well, well thank you very much. It, like I said, uh, two things to the equation. It takes drive. The individual has to have drive, has to want to continue to make progress, has to have purpose. But number two, you need support a great deal of people around you. My father, who relocated here from Quebec City, is the one who did research on the internet and discovered that HBOD, or hyperbaric oxygen, has helped me awaken from my coma of six months. And Rob, after three treatments, 
my eyes opened and that was the start to my recovery. Now it's been 18 years of learning how to talk, walk, move correctly, etc. All the simple things in life. Now I'm able to go to Starbucks, Tim Hortons for a cup of coffee. Now I'm able to enjoy my activities and my children are in school playing basketball, working, etc. Now I'm able, Rob, as I mentioned, I'm able to enjoy the simple things in life, the air that we breathe, the sunshine at one's face, and the activities that make us, give us purpose and make us happy, smile, etc. I love your attitude, Michael. It's just amazing. And I think your positive attitude is a big driving force behind recovery. I really do. I, I would like to add these two things, Rob. I think the reason why I have such a good attitude towards my recovery and I have drive and I have this because two things. I In my younger teenage years, I played many sports, ice hockey, baseball, soccer, and later in life, in my corporate life at Molson, Coors Canada, I was the director of field marketing. I had the same attitude in my work. I always worked hard to the end and always. So I think that drive in my rehab came from a combination of my younger teenage years combined with the elements in my later years in my corporate career. And that's why, Rob, I continue to this day. And as you know, they tell brain injury survivors you reach a plateau after X amount of time. Here I am, Rob, having a conversation with you and to this day, to this day, I have not reached a, what they call it, plateau. Here we are 18 years and I continue to make a small progress in my recovery, whether it be breath by breath, inch by inch, day by day, etc. But yeah. to this day, Rob, I continue to make progress because of those two things inner drive and support. I'm well surrounded by two things. Works A, B, Z because my injury happened at work. So they funded many of my therapies and provide my home support where I live now. So Works A, B, Z, Connect Community, also I'd like to thank them because they are the name of the organization that I reside in and now where we have 24 hour support. They take us to appointments I go to the gym now two days a week. They drive me to the gym to and from physio, etc. So I'd like to thank Works ABC. I'd like to thank Connect Community. I'd like to thank my father, who's the one that did research for hyperbaric oxygen, which we allowed me to wake from my coma. And Rob, the last thing I'd like to say is this. The last thanks I'd like to give is to each member of my rehab team that I have worked with the last 18 years, which has allowed me to take my game to the next level, whether it be breath by breath, inch by inch, movement by movement, but each person, whether that be a speech therapist, whether that be an occupational therapist, whether that be a physical therapist, whether that be the support, support staff that cared for my needs in my former group home where I live, or I live now, like my sincere thanks go to each of them for allowing me to allow me to continue to make progress well. Awesome. That's just so amazing. And you're still crushing life too, Michael. I understand you wrote a book. I wrote a book called The Courage to Come Back. I was presented first with the award called The Courage to Come Back back in 2012, which is available on YouTube for the world to see. So once I was presented with that award, it's on my back wall, Rob, as you see on the front page of the front yeah. newspaper. That was me in the wheelchair back then, living life to the fullest. So anyway, I wrote the book called The Courage to Come Back for two reasons. Number one, to give people inspiration, to give people hope, to give people purpose, 
drive in the recoveries, whether they be recovering from a TBI or another condition, and to show everyone that you can achieve new levels in the recovery. Like, like I said, Rob, in my case, here we are 18 years, and I continue to this day to make small progress. It's not leaps and bounds. It's not miles. It's not yards. It's small, it's tiny, it's breath by breath, it's inch by inch, but yeah. it's still progress, Rob, and that's why to this day I've not reached any plateau as, as of yet with my recovery. That is just so amazing. Just keep pushing, my friend. You are just crushing it. Thank you. I'm so glad that you reached out to me to, to fill us in on your book and yeah. tell us your story and just Things are just going great, and I just am so thankful that you reached out to me. Rob, I would just like to say this as well as we are near the end. That now I feel that my purpose in life is to be able to help others. I've been the UBC healthcare mentor now for the past five years, which is the University of British Columbia. So my role is to help these students who are going to be future healthcare professionals and share my journey with them of how I've gone from here to there with the support of their profession, etc. So, Rob, now I speak in schools. I volunteer my time, not paid, to be able to share my story, to give people hope, inspiration, etc. So, Rob, I am committed to now giving back in the next journey of my recovery in terms of inspiring, providing hope, etc. So, anyway... And now I'm only at the tip of the iceberg and I'm only at the beginning of where I want to be able to be able to fully give back. But anyway, this is my mindset now. Now that my coverage has gone so well, now it's my turn to give back to others. And you're going to achieve that too, my friend. I, I know that you're going to. You have the inspiration and you have the drive and I can see the passion in your heart. Thank, so, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Don't ever lose that passion. That is what keeps us all going. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So if they would have purchased your book, can you uh, where can that be purchased at Amazon or anywhere right books are it's sold? Available, it's available at Amazon.ca, yes. And my book is called The Courage to Come Back. And anyway, I will maybe message you later with the cover of my book, Words Available, etc. And if any of your audience want to read my book, yeah. anyway, it's available there. So, so Michael wow. will send that information to me, and it will be at the bottom of this YouTube channel. Just look in the description. You'll have a link that will take you directly to um, his, any information that he has. Do you have a website, Michael, or is it just um, your YouTube channel? Oh, you know what, Rob? I will send you a bunch of things. My bio, newspaper articles that were written about my story accident. And I'll leave it up to you, like, what you want to display to your audience and share with them. So I will send you a bunch of stuff with my material, my story, and I'll let you go through it. And you pick the material that you feel be most beneficial to your audience. Or Awesome, yes. I'll make sure that they all are able to get to anything that you have available. So, Rob, I just want to apologize one last thing because of my TBI that I had 18 years ago. I apologize for Rob for not being in a suit and tie for this formal interview because in my former life, I'm also as the director of marketing. I was used to being in a shirt and tie almost daily. And instead, with you here today, I mean a t-shirt and a casual <laughs> pants. So it's only when one suffers a TBI rob does he show up to an interview just like this. <laughs> you know what? All is forgiven. We are so informal around here. The platform of this podcast is to bring awareness to brain injuries, yeah, yeah. being a survivor. And unlike you, it, the first part of my recovery I spent getting down on myself and just didn't see any hope out. And then I finally said, you know what? I've got to get my story out and I've got to have a platform where other survivors could come and tell their stories. 
I'm passionate for awareness. And yeah, I'm yeah. sure all of my friends and coworkers are all sick of hearing it. But yeah. you know what? As long as I'm alive, I'm yeah. going to be preaching awareness because this is very important. Rob, I, 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 could not, I could not agree with you anymore because that was, as I believe, is by now a new mission in life to give people hope, inspiration, to draw more awareness toward TBI, to prevent further accidents, whether it be in a corporate marketplace, whether it be in a social, private setting like family, etc. So our job, Rob, is to provide job awareness to our injuries, etc. To not let this reoccur exactly amongst other people, individuals. Right. You know, if I had known things that I know now when yeah. I first started my injury, I just think how much farther could I be now? Yes. So that is why awareness is so important. So, yes, thank you so much for being on here today. Don't forget to send me all that information. And, guys, please, if you would, show Michael some love and check out all of his information. Head over to Amazon and grab that book. And, Michael, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to close out with? No, I just want to thank you personally, Rob, for having me, allowing me to be a guest today on your pod podcast to share my story and to give people hope inspiration, etc. And like you touched on, Rob, to draw awareness to both our injuries. Like, as you know, there are never any two brain injuries alike or very similar. Like, as you know, you just heard that I was in a coma for six months, my eyes closed. And then, boom, one day they opened. And, and as you know, Rob, it's now been 18 years of improving myself, working on myself physically and cognitively as well to be able to bring my game to the next level. And Rob, Virginia and I, I'm not done yet. No, you're not, my friend. You're not. I'm at the tip of the iceberg. There's still more progress for me to achieve. And anyway, thank you yes. for allowing me to be a guest. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go places and I, I I cannot wait to hear back, you know, six, eight months from now. I can't wait to see what your progress is from now because I know it's going to be even higher than you already are now. Oh, Rob, thank you very much for that. those words of support. And like as I mentioned, my journey is only beginning... I've awakened now. Now my role in life is now to draw awareness to our injuries, to provide workplace action, etc. So, Rob, thank you for allowing me to be here today. And we are going to move mountains together, my friend. So we are going to be difference makers. Yes. Yes. I agree with you, bud. <laughs> Guys, thanks for joining us. And we'll actually, we'll be back next week. So we will... See you next time. <laughs>